Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Fear not, little flock. Wherever you are, it is the Father's pleasure to give to you the kingdom. said there's no need to worry 
Maybe you've been worrying tonight. There's no need to cry unless you're crying tears of joy. There's no need, the song says, to be discouraged, but it's the Father's pleasure. Somebody say it's the Father's pleasure to give unto us. Somebody said unto me the kingdom because I believe a scripture in Revelation said that he shall wipe away all tears from off our faces. Amen. Amen. And we're going to see a new day. Somebody say a new day. And there'll be a new heaven. Somebody say a new heaven. And there'll be a new earth. Say a new earth. Hallelujah. And the former things, somebody said the former things will be passed away. And he said, behold, I make all things new. Somebody said all things new. And that includes me, amen. And that includes you, amen. And so I want to give honor to the Lord tonight because it's his pleasure to give unto us the kingdom. And I want to give God all the glory, honor, and praise for being my father tonight. And I want to thank him for his darling son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross and was buried in a borrowed grave and raised up after three days and after three nights just so that I might be standing here right now. And then on top of that sits at the right hand of the Father, who is a separate person, ever living, somebody say ever living, to make intercession regardless of how my day went, but he's ever living, regardless of what's going on and swirling on around us, but he's ever living to make intercession or interceding or being a mediator and going to the Father and asking the Father on my behalf to work all things together for the good for me because we love him, amen. Somebody say, I love him. And so I thank God for Jesus Christ tonight, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit because Jesus prayed to the Father and asked the Father if he would send the Comforter called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And you know, God was so good unto us that he decided to grant Jesus' petition. Do you need him to grant your petition tonight? I don't know what you've been bringing before the Father tonight, but he said it's his pleasure to give unto you not only the kingdom, but whatsoever you ask according to his will, according to 1 John 5 and 14. And so I want to give honor to the Lord tonight and Jesus and the Holy Ghost one more time because they're working. Somebody says they're working. They're working. And I want to thank God tonight because they're working. Somebody said they're working. And I don't know what you came in the building with tonight, but I want you to know that it's going to be all right because they're working. Somebody said they're working. And if you believe that they're working, the man of God, Bishop White, said one time, he said, if you believe the word of God, it will work for you. I want to encourage you tonight to believe the word of God and it will work for you. And there's a scripture over in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and it says, if you believe the Lord thy God, so shall you be established. And if you believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And a lot of times we've heard the words, we've heard certain scriptures, but we have to take those scriptures and apply them to our lives. I want you to believe the Lord your God tonight so he can establish you. But I also want you to believe the prophets so you can prosper. Because if you believe the word of God coming from somebody filled with the spirit, somebody said filled with the spirit, the word of God will work for you. So I want to thank God tonight for the word of God. And I want to give honor to God tonight for the bishop, the founder and the presiding bishop of the Church of the Living God International. And you know, we give him honor a lot because when you've been laboring in the vineyard for 54 years, you know, some of us ain't even been alive that long, but you've been laboring that long. The Bible says that you're worthy of double honor. And to give honor to whom honor is due, amen. So I do give honor to the man of God for the Church of the Living God International, being a place where I can come and worship and to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And I thank the Lord tonight for Elder Jones out of Bloomington Worship Center. And I give God all the glory and honor tonight for our pastor tonight. Give him a hand today. You know, Pastor Harris will sing with all his heart. And he'll pray with all his might. And he loves the people of God. And if you ever wonder if your pastor loves you, I'm going to tell you right now, he loves you. Because he calls your name out. Sunday morning prayer, he down on his knees praying before we even get here. He's praying at the house at nighttime. He's praying for you and lifting up your name before the Father. So I want to tell you tonight that you got to pray a man of God. And he lives what he preaches and he preaches what he lives. And so I give honor to him tonight because the Bible says, again, worthy of honor and double honor. And I want to thank God and give you all honor tonight because, you know, you are faithful people. And regardless of what you might be going through, and I'm turning to a scripture, although I've referenced some, and I'm going over to the book of St. Luke tonight. 
And I think I'll be in St. John too, but I want to encourage you tonight that you're a faithful people. And you know, we only got one adversary, that's the devil. His name was Lucifer before, before he fell, but he's been likened unto Satan now. And we only got one adversary who will try to take away everything that you have when you're not looking. And you have to be careful. And the Bible says, take the more earnest heed to the things which you have heard. This is Hebrews. Lest at any time we should let them slip. I believe that's Hebrews 3. But I want to encourage you as I'm turning over to Luke tonight that you are a faithful people. And the Lord said you're faithful. It wasn't because I just thought about, oh, the people are faithful. The Lord said that you are a faithful people. And the Lord is wanting to encourage you tonight that everything is going to be all right. And sometimes you may get a little fearful to say that, especially as a preacher, that everything is going to be all right. But the Spirit encouraged me that everything is going to be all right because he said, as long as I'm serving the true and the living God, that all things will do what Romans the 8th chapter says, which is work together for my good. So it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Doesn't matter what the situation is that's going on in your life at the time. And we all have different situations. We all have different needs. We all have different circumstances. And that's why we really even the more earnestly need to serve the true and the living God. But I want to encourage you tonight. The Spirit said everything is going to be all right as long as you keep your hand in the Lord's hand. And as long as you serve the true and the living God. I can't encourage you that everything is going to be all right if you're not in the Lord. Yeah. I can't encourage you that everything is going to work out for your good if you're not serving the Father. If you're not giving honor to the Son. And if you're not seeking for the Holy Ghost. I can't encourage you that everything is going to be alright. But he said if you are seeking his face. And if you are looking for Jesus' return on the cloud. And if you are looking for his appearing. Because the Bible says that if you have this hope in him. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. And because he is holy. He's causing us to be holy, and he loves holiness, and if you're looking to be holy and trying to be holy and looking to be faithful and trying to be faithful and doing all you can to serve God, and God knows where you are right now in your life, and so does the enemy, and the enemy wants to discourage you, to make you feel like you're not doing nothing. That you ain't, this ain't about nothing. That this ain't this, this, and this. And he may not give a, a full frontal assault, but he'll drop seeds of doubt in your mind from time to time. But I want to encourage you tonight that you're a faithful people. And God loves faithfulness. And God rewards faithfulness. God honors your faithfulness. And I want you to go over to Luke, the 12th chapter, with me tonight, starting around verse 22. And the Lord said he going to take care of you. He said, because you're a faithful people. And over in Luke, the 12th chapter, around about the 22nd verse, my subheading in the Dakes Bible says this is a law against worry and anxiety. And maybe you've been concerned about something. Maybe you've been perplexed about something, confused about something, not knowing which way to go about something, looking for guidance and leadership about something. But this is what the Lord said. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought, for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. In other words, he's not saying don't worry about nothing at all. In other words, in the sense of don't go to work, he ain't saying that. He's not saying don't eat. He's not saying don't do the things that are needful. Because Jesus had let them know at one point in time, you don't work, you're not going to eat. So you got to do the things that are needful. But sometimes you might come up a little short. Sometimes this, you might be trying to stretch ends and, you know, feel like you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and all these different things. But he says that what shall you eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. He said the life is more than meat. Somebody said more than meat. You know, Jesus is not concerned so much so about the meat. Because the cattle on a thousand hills is his, and the silver is his, and the gold is his. So whatsoever you need, he's going to supply that meat. He says that the body is more than raiment. In other words, this body is more than just the clothes that we put on. In other words, don't just be caught up on what you put on. He don't mind you looking nice, and that's all right, but he's saying that there's bigger things to be concerned about if you're going to have a care or a concern in life more than food and clothing. And he said, consider the ravens, for neither they sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. I want you to be encouraged tonight. God feeds them. 
guess what he's going to do? He's going to feed you too. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? In other words, you can't call yourself to grow just because you're thinking about it. He says, but if you then would not be able to do the thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? In other words, why are you so worried? Why are you so concerned? Why are you so perplexed? Don't be discombobulated. Don't be consumed because God is in control. He says, if you then not be able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. He keeps on giving us examples of those things that he has taken care of. He said, if one example wasn't good enough, I'm going to give you another one. If that ain't good enough, I'm going to give you another one. And if you need another one, I'll give you another one. He says, and they spin not, yet I say unto you that Solomon, King Solomon, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Why? Because the linens of the valley, they wasn't worried about nothing. Solomon had to try to figure out in time when he got off, he had to figure out how to hold on to his riches. He says, if then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And Jesus wasn't trying to make the people feel bad. He wasn't trying to cause them to be discouraged. He wasn't trying to cause them to be cast aside or cast away or be embarrassed or anything. But he was letting them know that he was there with them, and he had been the one supplying their needs all along. And if he was there with them supplying the need, surely he wasn't going to leave them all just out in the field somewhere with nothing once he went away. I want to encourage you today that Jesus was the same. The Bible says yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same way he took care of them back then. The same way he's taking care of us today. The same way he'll take care of us in the future. Whatever you need tonight, the Lord has it. He says, oh ye of little faith. So Lord, increase my faith tonight. And seek not, he said, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. He's telling them again, don't be worried about all this superficial stuff. He says, neither be ye of doubtful mind. What have you been worrying about? What have you been concerned about? What have you been in your mind contemplating, turning over and over? Some of us will think things to the ground almost. We'll turn it over in our mind one way. We'll turn it over another way. We'll try to figure it out this way and try to figure it out this way. But the Lord says, fear not, little flock. As the song said, it's the Father's pleasure. It's his pleasure to work it out for you. It's his pleasure to bless you. It's his pleasure to increase you. It's his pleasure to deliver you. It's his pleasure to make a way out of no way for you. He says, neither be ye of doubtful mind. What have you been thinking on? What have you been doubting about? Have you taken it to Jesus? There's a song that says, if you got a problem and you can't solve it, take it to Jesus. He says, you know you got a burden and you just can't fix it. The song says, take it to Jesus. All you got to do is take it to the Lord in prayer. He says, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. In other words, the world is worrying about clothes. The world is worrying about their hairdos. The world is worrying about a house. They're worrying about a job. They're worrying about a car. They're worrying about money. They're worrying about this and that. And you may say, well, I'm still in the world, so I'm concerned about these things too. But he is the solution to whatever you need. Believe in the Lord thy God, and so shall you be established. If you believe the word tonight, the Lord said you will prosper. What do you need him to do for you tonight? And I'm not just talking about prospering in the natural. Because you wouldn't want to prosper, as John says, and be of good health, even as your soul prospers. Because God is a balanced God. And he will give you balance in a thing. As you go forth in his way, so will the Lord go forth and multiply you. For all these things, I'm back to 30, do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. We serve a God who has eyes and he can see. And he has ears and he can hear us. 
And when you get on your knees, or even sometimes you may not have an opportunity to get on them, you may be driving down the street in your car. I found myself doing this. And I'll be just meditating on the things that I have need of. And the Spirit of the Lord will just say unto me, you, you know, I hear you. The Lord hears you. I want you to be encouraged tonight. He says in 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. What are you seeking tonight? It's all right to tell the Lord that you need this. And it's all right to tell the Lord that you need that. And it's all right to, to tell the Lord that I need X, Y, and Z. But he says here, but rather seek ye the kingdom. In other words, we have to seek the kingdom. You can tell God what you need, but you don't have to seek those things. He said, but seek the kingdom. It's all right to tell him what you need because he's a prayer answering God. But when it really comes down to it, he also wants you to seek the kingdom. And all these things that you're asking about shall be added unto you. And verse 32 says, fear not. Somebody say, fear not. not, not. Little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want you to be encouraged as we turn to our last scriptures in St. John, the 14th chapter. It is the father's good pleasure. And the song didn't even say good pleasure, but the scripture says it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. St. John, the 14th chapter. I want you to be encouraged tonight. You know, and this may not be a jump up and down sermon, but it's to encourage you tonight Amen. that somebody has been concerned. But the Bible says in Psalms that he's able to perfect that which concerneth thee. And so he came to perfect us. And not only to perfect us, but also the things that are concerning us, the things that he talked about in St. Luke 12. And over in St. John, the 14th chapter, starting in verse 1, the Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Jesus is saying this here because it's in red. He said, Believe also in me. Jesus is telling the people, He said, I know you believe in God. It's easy for people to say they believe in God. But then you've got to break it down further. Jesus said, But believe also in me. And when you believe also on Jesus, when you have a need, Jesus will come through. He will pray the Father that the Father would meet your need by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever y'all need tonight, he is already working on it. If you ask the Father in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, if you need God to move, ask the Father in the name of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will respond. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. He's talking about even what you got in heaven. So not only was he able to take care of the things that he talked about in St. Luke, the 12th chapter, but now he wants to pivot over to heaven. In other words, he's got you covered down here and also in the city. Somebody say, in the city. In my father's house are many mansions. In other words, you got one with your name on it. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. He says, and then on top of that, I go to prepare a place for you. Don't you know Jesus is not only meeting your needs down here, but he's also working on your mansion in heaven. You know, Jesus got you covered 360 degrees. He's working it out for your good right now, even now while you're sitting in this place. I want you to do as the pastor was encouraging us a little while back. Look afar off. You might not see everything that the Lord has for you right now. But as I started out, the Bible uh, in the Word of God, talking about how he's going to meet all of your needs. Don't you know because you're faithful and you've been faithful, I'm telling all three of y'all sitting in here, if you just keep on coming, if you just keep on holding on, if you just don't let nothing move you, nothing sway you, nothing cause you to look back, if you just keep on coming, no matter what mama say, daddy say, sister, brother, auntie, cousin, nephew, it don't matter what anybody say. If you just keep your eyes single, the Bible says in Matthew, so your body can be full of light. If you just keep on pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus, which is Philippians 3. If you just keep on pressing. And I know the devil going to keep on messing, and I'm not even trying to ride with y'all today, but I want you to know God is going to send your blessing. And if you just hold on 
a little while longer. Tell your neighbor, say, just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on, Brother Cliff. Just hold on, Sister Sister Ariel. Just hold on, Sister Naya. Just hold on, Pastor. Just hold on, Brother Brooks. Just hold on. We've been dancing through a fortnight. We all done cried sometimes, but joy. Somebody say joy. Come in the morning. Don't let go before you get to the morning. Sometimes folks give up in the middle of the night. And if they just kept on going and kept on going, there will be some light at the end of the tunnel. And the sun will come up after a while. But if you just go ahead on and give up, you're never going to know what the sunshine looks like. There's a song that Bishop White sang that says it takes a little rain in your life sometimes to appreciate the sunshine. I know it's been raining, but it don't rain always. After a while, after a while, somebody say after a while, the sun will shine. The sun, the S-U-N will shine, but you also want the S-O-N to shine on you. Somebody say, Lord, shine on me. He says, and if I go in verse 3 and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming back. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. In other words, Jesus sent us to a place where we can learn how to get to heaven. He's going to come back for us one day. When he comes on the cloud, he's going to be expecting us to go back with him. Because he showed us how to get to heaven. And in verse 6, I'm dropping down. Jesus says unto Thomas, because Thomas was doubting. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, the life is Jesus Christ. That's the life that we're living tonight. And because you're desiring and keep on being faithful to the life of Jesus Christ, he will deliver you. Somebody say he will. Because he's the way. Somebody say he's the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because you're in the house of God, seeking the face of God, it's through Jesus Christ. That's why he's going to deliver you. He's going to do it. In verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. He says, if you shall ask anything in my name, he says, I will do it. I want to encourage you tonight as we're standing. What do you need tonight from the Lord? The Bible says, take no thought. And when it's telling you to take no thought, you know, that just simply means that I don't have to worry about it. And when I get in prayer, that's my first opportunity to no longer take any thought. That's my opportunity to turn it over to Jesus. What are you still holding on to tonight? The Bible says take no thought. What do you need to offload tonight? You know, I used to feel bad about bringing something to the Lord all the time. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that. And I would bring a certain situations over and over to the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord began to show me that I had not turned it over to him. Because I kept on taking thought about it. But if you decide to not take any thought, that means you can turn it over on the altar. You can turn it over in prayer. You can let it go and leave it all there. So he can perfect it. Because it's concerning you. I want y'all to step in the aisle tonight. The pastor's going to anoint with oil. 